and welcome to Inside Number 23, my podcast which is all about sewing and knitting and living the craftiest life possible. My name is Katie and you can find me on all of the social medias as Miss Lavelli, uh, so Ravelry and Periscope. I am most active on Instagram and we also have a Ravelry group for the podcast which is where I post my show notes for all my episodes, although I do tend to also pop them in the down bar below but they're just a little more interactive on Ravelry. I'm coming to you as always from Hertfordshire, just north of London in the UK, and it is a pretty glorious autumn day today. We finally have had a break in the kind of Indian summer that we were experiencing, and it really feels like autumn is starting to set in, which if you know me, you will know that that's making me exceedingly happy. I'm feeling really bright and breezy today. Um, I got up quite early, I'm already caffeinated, I have had a pumpkin spice latte this morning provided by my lovely generous husband Emrys and I was actually um, able to get involved in a kind of online knit night, technically a knit night because um, it started yesterday, um, last night in Canada it was hosted by my wonderful beautiful friend Shannon of the Soxetra podcast but the time that it started which was five o'clock in the afternoon in Canada was actually 2am here in the UK so I wasn't able to um, kind of make the beginning of the knit night or any of the main knit night action but when I got up this morning at around about 7.15 uh, I sent Shannon a message and lo and behold they were still going. It was Shannon and her lovely friend Joanna. So hi Joanna, it was lovely to meet you properly. And I managed to catch about an hour of chat with um, Shannon um, before she headed off to bed and I started my day. So it was a particularly lovely way to spend the day. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that the next time that there's a knit night, it will be um, a slightly better time for me so I can actually interact with everybody else who was there. But yeah, Internet knit nights are clearly the way forward. It was so much fun. And like I said, it was the brilliant way to start the day because I am raring to go right now. I do have a couple of little admin bits and pieces before we get started with all of the crafty goodness. So first and foremost, we are hosting a sew along still, the Hollyburn sew along, which is still going on. I uploaded a couple of new videos this week and I'm happy to say that the end is now in sight. I have, um, I'm not sure if it's two or three more tutorials to upload, but those will be coming in the next week. Week. and I have an official end date for the Hollyburn sew along you guys it's going to be the 30th of September so the last day of September is going to be the last day when you can upload your finished objects in the finished object thread on Ravelry to be eligible for a couple of fun prizes and that's my birthday as well so you know happy days <laughs> but yes that will be our closing date so make sure that you check out the tutorials that are up already you do still have time to complete this project even if you start it now it's relatively simple but yes on the 30th of September I will close the finished object thread and from that I will draw some lovely prize winners so do get involved and again thank you to everyone who has been getting involved so far it's just been a really fun experience and there's been in generally very positive feedback about my tutorials so yay thank you for that in terms of things that are coming up in the near future I am going to be co-hosting a knit along with lovely Marsha 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 who is um, very little of the twitch and stitch podcast we're going to be co-hosting a color work cow and the hashtag which I always forget for this is um, hashtag autumn color 16 Basically, any colour work is involved as long as it's not simple striping. So we're looking for something intarsia based or fair isle based or something like that mosaic knitting, you know, so um, try and get imaginative, but whips are allowed so you can start now, but our official start date is on October 1st and we will be finishing that on December 1st. The idea is you can either work on whips, get all of those colour work things off your needles, which is what I will be doing with a cardigan that I've had on the needles and haven't worked on for basically a year. It's 
utterly shocking but I'll be working on that and um, yeah knit along with us get excited if you can't wait you can always start now as I said whips are allowed but given that we have quite a nice stretch of time to work on it you could always start a new project like a beautiful colour work cardigan you may well be finished within the time frame so funny I said to myself that I wouldn't be starting a new project with a knit along because I already have a huge amount of projects on my needles and like I said I have this cardigan that definitely needs to be finished and then I decided that it would be a very good idea to go on Ravelry and browse for colour work projects because that's never been dangerous in the past has it? As you probably suspected I have found a project that I have found fallen utterly in love with a new pattern that I'm thinking I may cast on for the colour work cow. <laughs> and that project is the beautiful cardigan Fox Glove by Kate Davies. And this pattern is actually a part of um, her collection Yokes. And I just have fallen in love with it, you guys. The Fox Glove pattern around the yoke is beautiful. It's a little bit of colour work, but the majority of the rest of the cardigan is in stocking net stitch, so it should work up relatively quickly. It's also steaked, and I do enjoy a good steak, so that would be fun. So watch this space. I may well have another colour work cardigan in my future because it's not as if I have too many things on the needles as it is, really, is it? <laughs> okay, with all of that out of the way, let's get on to what you're really here for, shall we? A little bit of knitting goodness to start off with, I think. So it's time for What's On My Needles? And I'm not going to lie, you guys, this week I don't have a huge amount to share with you. And the reason for that is I've been pretty much a monogamous knitter over the last week. Uh, you may remember, obviously, that I finished my chuck sweater and I've shared that with you and that was super exciting. But after finishing that, all I wanted to do was knit on sweaters and I only had one sweater, well, it's a cardigan, but one cardigan left on my needles, which is, of course, the Sophie cardigan by Jennifer Wood. Living, of course, in my Yarn Cellar Studios Garsley's bag, a firm favourite with me at the moment. It's amazing the difference it makes when you are knitting pretty much monogamously on one item, the amount of progress that you can make. Because you may remember from last week's episode, I was going on and on about the fact that I was working on the body of this cardigan and it felt like it was taking forever and... I was also talking about casting on the Risen Cardigan by Melanie Berg, which I'm still very excited to cast on, but I was kind of getting a little bit disheartened. I thought, I'm never gonna get this finished. It's really starting to drag. And I was just knitting on it a little bit each day, you know, my regular knitting time, just always on this one project rather than spreading it across lots of projects. And you guys, I finished the body of the cardigan. So if you can see, I've done all of the ribbing along the bottom. And the really lovely thing about this pattern is that the rib pattern changes slightly in the um, lace sections. So we have a little bit of intrigue. So some different um, two, two by one by two kind of intrigue, if you can see that there, which kind of continues on from the lace pattern in the back panel. So I finished the body and I cast it off and I couldn't believe it. It's just so great to have done that. I feel that's a huge achievement in the past week, which makes me very happy. And now I've started on my sleeves. And look at how much of this sleeve that I've done. That's literally just maybe a couple of days worth of knitting. But these sleeves, in comparison to how much work I was doing on the body of the cardigan, because as you can see, this has a lace pattern on the back and it also has um, lace patterns on the front. So having to kind of manage all of that work took quite a long time to go backwards and forwards in terms of rows. These sleeves are just round and round and round and round and round and there's only a tiny little bit of a lace accent on the back. So in comparison, these are flying off the needles. I still have my little progress keeper on there, my little gummy bear progress keeper, but I wouldn't be surprised if I got this finished really quite soon. And that makes me very happy because I might have it ready even to wear out on my birthday. And that would be really, really exciting. 
no pressure though. I'm not gonna put that additional pressure on myself, but um, I'm so happy with it. Having my chuck sweater off the needles and as a wearable garment now has made me so happy. And the idea of filling my wardrobe with these beautiful hand knit cardigans and jumpers is bringing me so much joy at the moment that I am over the moon that this is now um, kind of off the needles almost. But yeah, I really am quite overwhelmed that I've managed to get so much work done on this and I can't stop knitting on it. It's great TV knitting too, because like I said, the sleeves are now super simple, just round and round and round and round and round. I think I have maybe uh, five repeats of a six row pattern to do, and then I'm onto the rib, and then this sleeve will be finished and I'll start on the next one. So the end is definitely in sight. It's not, we're not quite there yet, but it's in sight, it's going to happen. And I'm gonna have another beautiful finished cardigan to wear. And I just can't wait because this is so soft and snuggly. The yarn is by John Arban Textiles. It's their Viola yarn in the Aquarius colorway. And it's a double knit, 100% merino and I have just adored working with it. It is so soft and snuggly and gorgeous and I can't wait to wear this. I'm a little concerned because I have heard from some people that the Knit by Numbers yarn by um, John Arburn tends to pill a little bit and as far as I know this yarn is the the same um, fibre content because it's the same 100% merino it's just dyed slightly differently to give us this lovely kind of almost variegated colour oh I love this colour so much it's so beautiful so I'm a little concerned with that because it would be a real shame after all the time that I've spent on it if it were to, to kind of pill right away but I just can't get enough of how soft and snuggly it's so lovely it's my happy knitting it's bringing me a lot of joy right now so <sighs> sweater knitting, cardigan knitting, gorgeous yarn, everything is just happy, the planets have aligned and I could just spend every waking hour of every day at the moment working on this, which is a great place to be with, with my knitting. I'm just so excited <laughs> about um, cardigan and garment knitting. Um, I want to get involved in so many of the cows that are going on with cardigans. I mean, double knit podcast audio podcast that I've just started listening to um, recently are having um, a cardi party hashtag cardi party um, 2016 and I want to get in on that and um, the amazing Andy Satterland has released her blaster cardigan that I've talked about previously that I am desperate to cast on and um, she's doing a knit along for that and um, also gorgeous lovely opera Joe and um, Gabby are having having a, um, are co-hosting a pumpkin knit along. Who wouldn't want to do pumpkin knit along? So I'm hoping that with some yarn that, fingers crossed, um, will be coming for my birthday, that I can cast on a cardigan that's going to cover all three of these um, knit alongs all at once and then triple dipping, happy days for me, and a pumpkin themed blaster cardigan that is just going to be the best thing ever and I, I really can't wait. I can't wait. I just want to knit all the cardigans in the world. <laughs> I have one other knitting project to share with you this week and this is actually a brand new project. So it's very exciting but also it's a top secret project. And that's because it's for Emrys. <laughs> and I don't really know why I'm whispering because he's out of the house right now. I wanted to record this when he wasn't in the house so that I could talk about this project, but I'm pretty sure that we're safe because much as he loves me, I don't think he watches the podcast every week for an hour. But in case you are watching my lovely, lovely husband, do not watch this part of the podcast because that would be incredibly sad <laughs> if you were to see the surprise. I'm babbling now, he's not gonna watch this, it's fine. But yes, new project this week and most excitingly, it is living in my lovely puggy bag and this was given to me by Mel, who is Dubai Mel on Instagram and Ravelry and she made this herself and Mel, oh, I love it. 
Look at the little grumpy puggies. Oh, they're so grumpy. I love these ones because you can see their little donut tails. So adorable. But yes, suffice it to say, I am in love with this bag. But you may remember that I shared with you um, some completed socks that I had knitted for Emrys for his birthday. Like I said, his birthday's two days after mine and this year he's turning 30. So I really wanted to make sure that I had some, some thoughtful handmade gifts to give him for such a important birthday. And after I finished the socks, I thought, what else can I make for him that I know that he's going to use and he's going to wear? And one thing that Emrys always wears, pretty much constantly, even in the summer, is hats. He tends to wear kind of little toque hats that are quite small and quite fitted to his head, and he wears them all the time. He wears them at work, he wears them even when we're just in the house. He's a big kind of hat wearer, and I thought, this is perfect. I need to make him a hat for his birthday, and... I started looking at patterns right away and got really, really excited. So the pattern that I found, um, which I think hundreds of you have probably knit before, is um, by Tin Can Knits, and it is the Antler Hat, which is actually a free pattern on Ravelry. And I'm a big fan of Tin Can Knits. Um, I really, really like their patterns, and I like the fact that they come in so many different sizes, because in general, they kind of go from newborn all the way up to like 4XL, which means that, you know, everybody can have a version of whatever um, garment it is, and a lot of them are unisex. They're just a fabulous company. I really, really enjoy their patterns. But as yet, I haven't actually knit anything by them in the past. So I thought this is perfect. The hat is cabled and worsted weight and everything that I wanted it to be. And I'm a huge cable fiend, as you'll know from seeing some of my previous works in progress on this channel. I love cables. I love textured knitting. And I just really thought that this would be perfect for Emrys because it is classy and clean but it has a little bit of interest as well so perfect for someone who doesn't tend to wear a huge amount of kind of garish things and things that are too out there. So what I decided to use for it was and you're going to recognize this yarn right away <laughs> Look what I've got left. So <laughs> from when I knit up my chuck sweater, I had a couple of balls of this left. This is um, the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes um, Worsted Weight Yarn. And it is in the Cadet colorway. So this is the exact color that I used for my chuck sweater. And I thought this will be perfect for a hat for Emrys. Again, it's a really nice neutral color, but this slightly kind of greeny blue color, I think is gonna look really, really lovely on him. It's gonna bring out his eye color and it's gonna be perfect. So I cast this on just this morning and I'm already a little bit addicted to it because I always forget that when you're knitting something smaller it grows so much more quickly so this is what I have so far um I've basically just cast on the stitches and obviously I'm knitting the um, brim of the hat which is a one by one rib round and round and round and round and round and that took me about half an hour to cast on and do all of all of this. So I have no doubt that this will be finished by his birthday, which is October 2nd. And I'm really, really enjoying it. The only issue that I'm going to have with this is that I do want it to be a secret project. I do only want to work on it when Emrys is not around or um, when I can kind of sneak off and do it in private. But um, I'm really enjoying it. I love working with this yarn. I loved it when I was working on my sweater. But um, this is just going to be the loveliest hat. And I've also um, popped on a little Progress Keeper, which is the tiniest cup of tea. I don't know if you can really see that, but it's adorable. Which was a little extra that came with a stash enhancement that I'm going to share with you later. But that is on there just marking the beginning of my round because I couldn't find a stitch marker. And a progress keeper works just as well. But yeah, I'm really excited. It's it's nice to have um, a project on my needles that is for Emrys, but also is really exciting for me to work on because I'm really enjoying the pattern and I can't wait to get to the cable chart. It just looks so much fun and um, yeah, it's gonna be great. And I really hope that he likes it for his birthday. Cause like I said, it's a special one and I wanted to do something special for him. So. 
yay for hats it's also really exciting with this hat because i'm going to be able to take part in a knit along that's being co-hosted by two of my favorite podcasters and that is lovely nessa of the kilter craft podcast and twee of the twisted stitches podcast and they are going to be having a harvest hat along which i believe has already started and um basically just knit a hat um, for their knit along and then you can enter and be eligible for prizes so I can take part in the harvest hat along with my hat for Emrys and I'm really really happy about that because like I said big fans of both of those podcasts so it's just nice to get involved with something that they're doing and you should definitely check them out if you haven't because they're both wonderful, their podcasts are wonderful. Um, Nessa does her podcast alone, Twee does hers with her co-host Kimberly, who has recently had a little baby. So adorable and yeah, go and check them out and join in the Harvest Hat Along because all you need to do is knit a hat and who wouldn't wanna knit a hat right now? Well, it's getting colder and we all need hats. I am really excited to be able to share the next segment of the podcast with you today because this section has been MIA for the past couple of weeks because of all of the work I've been doing on the Hollyburn Sew Along. But guys, it's time for So What? I have a sewing segment this week. I am so happy. So happy, so what? You know, it's all working out really well. But yes, I have started sewing again for more than just the tutorials and I am really happy. I'm in such a good place and I'm really really excited to start working on a whole bunch of new projects. So you may remember from a couple of weeks ago I was talking about different projects that I wanted to start um, in the near future both for our holiday and for other things and one of the projects that I talked about being kind of the one that I really really wanted to get done was this one, so this is a pattern by Deer and Doe, who are a French pattern company, and it's called Robe Bleue. And it's this beautiful little kind of shirt waist dress with all of these princess seams and a little bow detail at the back. And I've wanted to make this pattern for quite some time, but the reason that I really, really wanted to make it now is that it is going to be for my birthday. <laughs> so um, this will be my, my birthday dress. Um, so I need to get it done basically by September 30th so that I can wear it out on my birthday. I haven't made a huge amount of progress on this thus far. Um, two days ago, I was on a late shift at work and I decided that I was going to spend my morning cutting out my fabric for this dress so that the next time that I get a day off, I can literally just spend at least a morning, if not the whole day, what luxury, um, sewing this up. And the fabric that I am using, I'm gonna show you a small piece of it. I have all of my pattern pieces all cut out and laid out ready to sew, so I didn't really want to disturb them all. But just to show you exactly what fabric I'm using, which I have shared on the podcast before, it's this fabric. Oh my goodness. So this fabric is called Fox in Fox Gloves. That's what the print is called. You can tell I'm obsessed with fox gloves right now, right? Because the, the colour work pattern I was talking about earlier had fox gloves on it and this has fox gloves on it. So I could wear them together. That would be amazing. <laughs> but yes, this is fox in fox gloves. It's this beautiful, it's technically a quilting cotton, but it is so soft, you guys. It's beautiful. It's very high quality quilting cotton, basically. It doesn't have um, a stiffness at all. It has a beautiful drape and it has this most beautiful print all over of these little foxes and the fox gloves flowers. And I'm just, I'm in love with it. I've been in love with it for some time since I shared it with you on the podcast before, but now I have finally cut into it and I am just utterly ecstatic. I purchased it from a um, online store based in the UK, which is called M is for Make. That is the label that came with all of the fabric. Yes, M is for make.co.uk. They have an incredible selection of fabric and they actually still have the um, foxes and fox gloves uh, fabric available. So if you want some for yourself, do go and check them out. But yes, I spent the morning cutting out my fabric for this dress. And you may or may not remember that when I talked about making this dress, I did say that I was a little concerned that I wouldn't have enough fabric for the whole dress. And I'm happy to say I managed to squeeze 
almost every pattern piece out of the fabric that I had. Literally, I have a little pile of scraps left, but none of them are bigger than around about this kind of size. There's very, very little yardage left, which in a way is good because I hate wasting fabric. It's really, it's not great when you have a lot of yardage left over when you're making something. But I was able to do that because I'm going to be using a contrast color for the collar and the cuffs of this dress. With those, I'm just gonna do them in a plain white fabric as a little added feature. I also think that with the collar, rather than having the pointed collar, I'm just gonna round out those edges so it will be more of a kind of rounded Peter Pan collar, which is more kind of my preference when it comes to this type of thing. But yes, by taking the collar piece, the cuff piece, and also there is, um, a hem facing in this pattern, which is supposed to be cut in the main fabric pattern, but I'm gonna just be using like a plain navy fabric for those pieces. I was able, hooray, <laughs> to get all of those pattern pieces cut out. So like I said, they are all now ready to be sewn together. And so fingers crossed, they will definitely be finished in time for my birthday and I can't wait. I wanted to share a couple of initial thoughts about the deer and doe pattern, um, just kind of after um, opening everything up and, and using the pattern pieces and that type of thing. Um, initial thoughts in general are very positive. I've never used a deer and doe pattern before. And I think for one, their packaging is beautiful. All of their their fonts and their their style is is very very my kind of thing. I'm a very big fan in general of of what they do. I also like the fact that their pattern pieces are um, rather than being printed on tissue paper, they're printed on quite thick white paper, which means that they're a lot more resilient for the way that I like to use my pattern pieces, which is using. Um, tracing paper and a tracing wheel so rather than cutting out a specific size I leave all of my sizes intact and then I'll trace over the pattern piece to then cut it out of the fabric. Um, I just like having the variety of sizes left rather than restricting myself just to one size because bodies change all of the time you might want to make a different size in the future so that's my personal preference and having a much thicker kind of pattern piece made out of like white pattern paper like this um, it is a lot more hard wearing for that kind of pattern cutting. So I'm a big fan of that. I also like the fact that the pattern envelope is quite large. It's a lot larger than other patterns that I've used, which means that when you're refolding all of your pattern pieces after you've used them, you don't have to kind of have that weird forcing them back into a tiny envelope um, because there's lots of space in here to fit everything. And I really appreciate that. The one thing that I think is slightly disappointing about the patterns in general is that the sizing on them is a little restrictive. There are a lot of very small sizes um, included. So it goes all the way down to um, a 31 and a half inch bust, but it only goes up to a 41 inch bust. And I found that a little difficult because I have, I'm kind of in the middle for my bust and my waist measurements, but my hip measurements have quite um, plentiful hips, shall we say. And I was almost hitting the larger size. And I wouldn't consider myself to be um, kind of plus sized person and um, that I'm already kind of being squashed to the upper end of the sizes makes me feel that anyone who's kind of more well endowed um, would would maybe struggle with these patterns which is a little bit sad because the designs are beautiful and um, it's it's just a little disappointing that there's not more variety in the sizes available because like I said they're gorgeous so I think that it should be lots of people who are able to enjoy them rather than just um, people who are slightly smaller. Just my own personal opinion on that. In terms of the way that they're put together, they're absolutely beautiful and I would definitely buy from them again, but I just think it would be worth their while to maybe consider extending that size out um, to be more inclusive of lots of different people of different shapes. Moving away from sewing, although we're very excited to have sewing back on the podcast, most definitely, but uh, so Swinging back around to more yarny goodness, I was a little bit cheeky this month and I have made a little purchase. So it's time for stash enhancements, exciting, 
It is my birthday month after all, and if you can't treat yourself on your birthday month, then when can you do this, to be perfectly honest? Like, has to be done. So this stash enhancement is really quite special because I've been wanting to get some yarn from this particular dyer for a very long time. She is incredible at what she does. She is also the host of a podcast and I just I just love her. I think she's wonderful. And that is Lara of The Fawn Knits. And I've been watching Lara's podcast for a long time. She recently, um, well, it's not so recently now, it feels like she's, she's quite established now, but um, started dyeing yarn. She used to make beautiful project bags, which she still does. And I'm still desperate for one of her project bags as well, because they are beautiful. If you can't tell, I'm pretty much a huge fan of everything thing that she does but yes yarn dyeing is slightly newer than the other things that she's been doing for quite some time and she has an incredible sense of style with the yarn that she dyes they're all slightly edgy and interesting and mysterious and I just oh you need to follow her on Instagram and watch her podcast to to stay up to date with all of the colorways that she dyes because I pretty much want every single skein of yarn that she ever dyes, so, you know. But I had had my eye on a particular colorway for quite a long time. And the way that Lara dyes, she doesn't necessarily dye all of her colorways at one time. And so this colorway I hadn't seen in her shop for a little while. On one of her more recent podcasts, she was showing what was going into her shop update. And she said, oh, this colorway is coming. And she kind of commented that of all of her colorways, it was the most kind of autumnal. And that was probably why she'd felt like dyeing it, but that it was going to be in the shop that week. And I just couldn't help myself. I'd been dying for some of Lara's yarn for the longest time and she finally had dyed up this colourway which I have been losing my mind over for quite some time and <laughs> this is really quite amusing to me because I've just realised that pretty much everything, every segment of this podcast has become fox themed. <laughs> but this is the yarn. <gasps> oh look at it. And the colourway is called Fantastic Mr Fox. <laughs> So I've had fox glove cardigan, fox and fox glove fabric, and now fox themed yarn. So clearly I have foxes on the brain <laughs> right now, but let's go back to the amazingness of this yarn. And Laura's shop is called The Fawn and the Fox. It's just, I'm very foxy. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Let's be serious, we're talking about yarn. This is the colourway and oh guys, look at this. I'm gonna just take the label off so that I can show you all of the colours because look at this just beautifulness. This um, is based on the Wes Anderson um, stop motion Fantastic Mr Fox which I love, which I watched recently. I hadn't seen it um, and I'd always wanted to and I decided to watch it recently and I genuinely think it's just superb. I'm a huge fan of that movie. But look at the colours in this. Look at this hot pink and these golden oranges and, and browns. There's a couple of little speckles of black in there as well, but it is stunning. I love it so much and I'm I just, I'm so happy that it's finally here. Um, I really wanted it because I'm trying to get some special projects together to take away with me um, on holiday when I'm in Florida for the long, long, long flight that I'm going to have to take to get there. And also kind of evening projects to work on on my holiday because it's always nice to have something special to work on. And I just thought this yarn, is so special and is going to make me so happy to to work on that it's it's perfect it's perfect for kind of autumn and halloween time and i just know that i'm going to have the best time working on this um on the flight and um when I'm actually away. I'm not entirely sure what exactly I'm going to be using it for. I have a couple of patterns in mind, but um, no kind of front runners just yet. And it has to be the perfect pattern for this beautiful, beautiful yarn. So I'll keep you posted about that. But this is, um, more details about the yarn. This is Lara's Badger Base, which is a fingering weight yarn, but it is 75% um, Superwash Blue Face Leicester and 25% Nylon. 
and I just, oh, I love it. I am a huge fan of merino blends of yarn. You know, my my Sophie cardigan is 100% merino and I do love the softness of it and how kind of buttery smooth it feels. But I am really starting to get attracted again to blue face less yarn. I love it. Foxes, foxes, foxes everywhere. Not that that's a bad thing at all. <laughs> it's just really funny that I didn't even realise that. That's Oh, that's ridiculous. I'm ridiculous. Thank you, Lara, for dyeing such amazing colourways. I can't wait to use this, although I will be hanging on. Like I said, I will be holding off a little bit, but it's just my my every dream come true. I'm so happy with it, and you guys, it's going to look incredible. Whatever I do with it, it will look incredible because it's just stunning. Also, very generously, Lara included in my parcel a couple of stitch markers and progress keepers, which are just so cute. And the little teacup that was on Emrys's hat is also one of those. But everything about the parcel that came was perfect and so well thought out. I'm just overwhelmed, Lara. I think you're amazing and just... Thank you. Thank you for being awesome in general. And and yeah, I'm just a gushing fangirl. What can I say? <laughs> so that's it for kind of knitting and sewing and crafting content. I told you it wasn't going to be a huge amount. I've been very, very focused on a few special projects this week, but you never know. That means that I may have some things finished soon, which is always super exciting. But I'm going to move on now to my final segment, which is, of course, General Waffle general waffle and this week I'm actually going to be joined by my lovely co-host again my gorgeous and wonderful husband Emrys is going to be joining me so I'm going to hand you over now guys to myself and Emrys in a different place at a different time but through the magic of editing we're going to be there right now Ooh. Hello. hello hello everybody and welcome to this week's General Waffle. General, General Waffle. Waffle. That's your favourite bit <laughs> about <laughs> being here. <laughs> so, in case you haven't noticed, I am joined once again by my lovely partner in crime, my husband, Emrys. Uh, Say hi. Um, hello. Don't just stick your tongue out at them, that's really rude. So this week we're going to do something a little bit different. Usually when Emrys is on the podcast, we talk about films. Yeah. But this week... We're talking about TV shows. Ooh. Yeah, so something that you may not know about me and Emrys. Yes, we love films. We absolutely love films. We love going to see films, going to the movies, but we're also massive telly addicts. <laughs> um, we spend much too much of our lives in front of screens, most probably. But we've been really excited recently because a lot of our favourite TV shows are restarting and we've also been kind of catching up on some older shows, refreshing those so that we can be ready for the new seasons to start. So we're going to be talking about re-watching some things, some things that have recently restarted, and then some things that are restarting in the near future. So yeah, they're coming, they're coming. We can feel them coming and we're very excited. First of all, I'm gonna start off by talking about things that we have been re-watching mm. recently. So we've been re-watching Scream Queens. What is Scream Queens for those who may not have watched it? So Scream Queens is uh, made by Ryan Murphy, who made American Horror Story, which we'll be talking about later, and, and Glee. Glee. And I would say it's kind of a combination of those two things yeah. without the singing. It kind of sends up the whole horror genre mm -hmm. as well and plays with some of the, the dynamics and uh, of that, really. So being big horror fans... Um, it's it's really, really amusing to watch and it does play on a lot of stereotypes of the genre. It's really, really fun. I would say if you like horror, but you you like things that don't take themselves too seriously mm. and that have a slightly twisted sense of humour, which Ryan Murphy is all about, then you'll definitely enjoy that. So we've rewatched the entire first season, mm. didn't we? Yeah. We're excited about the new season. I have started rewatching. Gilmore Girls! Mm. Yay! Which, Emrys can sit here and look like he's all like, mm, Gilmore Girls, but he has been watching it with me. Yeah. <laughs> I know how excited you are about the, the new series that's coming, Gilmore so... Girls. 
I've not really ever properly watched it, so mm -hmm. I thought I, if you were watching some of them, I would, I would, I would pop in and take a look. And I don't dislike it. I don't necessarily think I'm the target audience <laughs> for it. Um, <laughs> but it's very, it's very gentle. It's very um, warming. Warming. Warming is, is yeah. It's, uh, it's very sweet. I very much enjoyed it. I said, we were talking about this this morning, I said it's interesting because when I first started watching Gilmore Girls, I was a lot closer to Rory's age. And now I'm re-watching them. I'm a lot closer to Lorelai's age, which is interesting because I'm finding some parts of it more, more difficult to um, understand and relate to than I did um, when I was younger. But in general, I just really love it. It's just feel good TV. And I think it's particularly appropriate for this time of year as well. Mm -hmm. It always feels kind of autumnal in mm. that show. Even when it's in the summer, I just feel like it's all cozy and warm and snuggly, which is what I want for, for my autumn TV. So that's what we've been re-watching. Mm. What has just restarted in terms of TV? American Horror Stories Yay, restarted. American Horror Stories season six. And I can't quite believe there's been six seasons. I know. That's kind of insane. Yeah. There's been one episode on already mm -hmm. and we're going to talk a little bit about it. So if you haven't watched it yet, spoilers. Spoilers. Skip ahead. Spoilers. Spoiler alert in here. Yes. Giving you some time to take that in Spoilers. and not and find out about it. The reason we're being particularly precious about American Horror Story spoilers is that you may not know if you haven't watched the programme, but every single season refreshes itself. So they tend to use a kind of core team of actors that mm -hmm. come back to play different parts each year. Yeah. But every time the new season starts, it's a new story in a new place with new characters. So you had the first season was Murder House. The second season was Asylum. The third season was Coven. Uh, the fourth season was Freak Show. Yeah. And the fifth season was Hotel. In the lead up to season six, they did not release any information about what the season was going to be about at all. All of the um, little kind of teaser trailers and stuff that they released covered so many different genres. It was kind of insane. And basically the only thing that they put in with the season six was a question mark. So it's basically a big mystery. Mm. So nobody knew what this season was going to be about. So season six of American Horror Story mm. is called My Roanoke Nightmare. Ooh. What's that? Um, you might, if you're a viewer of American Horror Story, recognise the name Roanoke. And... You probably won't. She <laughs> somehow miraculously remembered that someone had said like two words about this place in the first, in the first season. season of American Horror Story. Um, this is based on true events that actually occurred in the United States. I think the town itself was called Roanoke. Mm -hmm. And um, some settlers were left there accidentally abandoned there. They were given no supplies basically and um, a town of almost 200 people when they eventually got back and tried to look for them had completely disappeared and there were lots of different theories as to what would have happened, whether they had been murdered, whether they had died, whether this story, this kind of spooky supernatural story that grew up around this event was actually kind of propaganda to hide the fact that British settlers had abandoned these people and then a whole town had, had died a horrible death. But that's basically in context um, the place that this is about. So My Roanoke Nightmare is set in modern days, yeah. modern times, and it involves a couple who moved to a house in Roanoke mm -hmm. and strange things start happening. The style of it is really cool. Um, it's That's kind my of it's done as it. a recreation. Uh -huh. So you have the you have actors playing these real people who are talking to camera as though they actually are the people. So it's kind of like you know when there are all those trashy TV shows when they're like my experience with the paranormal, and then you see people reenacting it. So you have the real life people who are literally sitting as though in an interview setting, mm -hmm. speaking, speaking directly to the camera, yeah. talking you through the events. And then you have your reenactment actors who are a completely different set of actors. Mm -hmm. And the best thing is, is that you get double the amount of incredible cast mm -hmm. in it. So 
it's just fascinating when you see the people who are playing the real characters and then kind of like the reconstruction versions because they're all so good. Cooper Gooding Jr's in it as well. Um, he's come over from American Crime Story. He's just so good. He's very, very, very good in this. Yeah. And um, it's nice to see him acting with Sarah Paulson. Hmm. Um, who was also an American Crime Story, went from American Horror Story to American Crime Story, and, and, now, and now has brought Cooper Gooding Jr. back with her. It's great! <laughs> and finally, in our little um, rundown of, of TV goodness. Goodness. What is going to be restarting in the near future that we're very excited about? So we already so, talked about some of them a little bit. So, so Scream Queens comes back uh, to your screens in three days. Three days. So, and what uh, else is coming back? Gilmore Girls. Gilmore Girls. A little bit, a little bit further to wait for Gilmore Girls, mm -hmm. obviously, because that's coming out on Thanksgiving. But I still am so looking forward to to seeing the whole cast back and together. And it's Netflix, right? It's on Netflix, and it's a four part special. Nice. Um, kind of based on the season, so you're gonna have your spring, summer, and your autumn and winter episodes. Nice. And I just think it's gonna be really exciting and really great. I can't wait. She's a little bit excited about that. Um, what else is coming back? Gotham. Gotham! So I watched Gotham as it was on. Um, this one only just sort of uh, co cottoned onto it a little bit later and watched them all back to back. So you'll probably have them a bit fresher in your mind than I do. Yep. So obviously there's superhero stuff everywhere. There's TV everywhere. shows, there's films, there's everything. And I would say, from my opinion, for the most part, the, the stuff that's out there from Marvel really does kind of beat out the stuff that's there from DC at pretty much every single opportunity. But Gotham, for me, is the one example from DC that I think is really good, especially of the, all these different TV series. And there's some really great performances in it from I quite have, a big I group of different actors. I have two words for you about yeah. how good Gotham is. Yeah. Oswald Cobblepot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love him he is so brilliant. much. He is my favourite character oh, he's too. he's brilliant. In case you, you may or may not know, that's Oswald the penguin. is the penguin. It's the penguin. And he's the young version of the penguin and he is my all-time favourite character in Gotham. I think he's incredible and he's just the perfect, perfect villain. Mm. And as you will know, I love myself a villain. And that's why Gotham works for me, mm. because it's pretty much all about the bad guys. Mm -hmm. I personally am not a huge fan of Batman. As a character, I find Batman quite irritating because I find him quite angsty. And I kind of want him to tell him to get over it <laughs> a little bit. Um, but the thing about Gotham that I absolutely love is that you can kind of understand his character more because you're seeing him from a young boy mm. grow into the person that he's going to become, and mm. that is so interesting. Mm. Plus, Alfred is just I was gonna say amazing, Sorry. and their and their dynamic and relationship is is that alone is worth watching Gotham I agree. for. Sean Pertwee as as Alfred, and, and for me, and this this is controversial maybe for some people, mm -hmm. but I think he's it's the best version of Alfred that I've ever seen. I agree, and you can almost imagine him growing up and turning into Michael Caine. Mm -hmm. Alfred in Gotham mm. is, he he's a dangerous man mm. in, in, in himself and that's why... And he's why, very physical. And the dynamic with him and Bruce is so, so much more family based. Like you genuinely feel that they are almost father and son, mm. but not, and it's, it's just perfect. It's perfect and I can't wait, can't wait the new season. Ah, 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 ah. I can't wait. And I'm not usually that excited about Batman related things. So that's all the TV that we've been watching, that we've been re-watching, and that we're excited to watch in the near future. Yes, we are aware that we watch a lot of television. And we just picked a couple that we that we wanted to talk about. That yeah, we, this isn't even these are the ones close that made the to cut. the amount of things that we mm. watch on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks for having me. You're so welcome. I like talking about telly and that. Thank so. you for coming. Mm. Whoop. Yay. Hope you've enjoyed listening to us waffle on about our TV programs. Generally. Generally waffling. <laughs> 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 if you have any suggestions for shows that you think that we might like, then please do leave them in the mm. comments down below. 
down here. I like down. my favorite bit. I love when people yeah. do this. You YouTube like videos. this. Yeah. Yeah, down below. Yeah. That's everything that I have for you this week, you guys. Um, please like the video if you have enjoyed it. Please hit subscribe down at the bottom if you want to be kept up to date as when I'm uploading new videos. I have so much exciting new content coming within the next month or so. So you definitely want to be subscribed. Subscribe. <laughs> you just want to subscribe. That's like you. You. Subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> I love you all so much. I hope you all have an incredible week filled with tele addict goodness and obviously all of the, the craftiness that, that you would could possibly want. But for now, happy sewing, happy knitting, happy TV watching, and I will see you all again soon. Bye. Bye. It's autumn. <laughs> autumn. Why did you say it's autumn? I don't know. I was, you were listing things that you're excited about. I'm excited that it's autumn and so are you. Am I still waving? We can stop now.